In this video, I'm going to cover a few tips you can use to help improve the general quality of your home videos. Right from the beginning here, let's establish one overriding thing that will separate your videos from any others. Regardless of what the subject matter is, a successful video always tells the story. Usually, when shooting video, most people are taking random shots over the course of an event. Whether it's a family get-together, a child's birthday party, or a trip to the zoo, they are trying to capture everything in a desperate attempt to have enough footage to make an interesting video. The result of this is that they find themselves extremely restricted in the footage they have at hand, and this in turn makes editing very difficult. The trick here is to find the story of the event before the event happens. If you shoot the video as it happens, then all you'll have is endless footage of what you personally saw, which leaves you with only two choices. A three hour video of what you saw, or you can cut out the bad shots and make a shorter video of what you, what you saw. Either way, it will most likely be pretty boring. Creating a home movie of any event means you are representing the event, you are not documenting it. So your primary task is to identify the story of the event and tell that story. By doing this, you can then shoot with editing in mind. Once you have imagined the event as a story, you can then mentally break it down into a series of small chunks or scenes. Make a list of these scenes and use them to create either on paper or in your mind a storyboard. Your storyboard doesn't have to be hugely technical or complicated. It is simply a roadmap or a reminder to you of the direction in which you are heading and the shots you think you'll probably need. The next point to look at has to do with shooting in high definition. Nearly all modern video devices, regardless of size, shape or original function, capture video in high definition. This is great for picture quality but the downside is that any jerkiness or shake that occurs when footage is being taken will be amplified by the high definition codecs your device is using. Unsteady footage is a major distraction to your audience and even if they are not quite sure why they want to look away, they will. To minimise this problem, you must, whenever possible, use some kind of support or stabilising system. Now you could spend thousands of dollars on a full Steadicam rig but possibly that may be a little bit over the top. You could use a tripod, a monopod, or even a handheld stabiliser. Of course, sometimes even these simple devices are impractical, so try these tips. Use a neck strap on your device and keep a constant tension on that strap as you shoot to keep steady. Place your elbows on a tabletop or any flat surface. Tuck your elbows into your waist as you move and shoot. Lean against a wall or anything solid to reduce motion. Finally, we are going to take a quick look at some composition tips as they apply to video. It's a big subject, so I'll only be covering the first rule most people learn, and that is the rule of thirds. It is a simple concept where the frame of the shot is broken into a grid and the subject of the shots are arranged according to that grid. Notice in the image on screen that the boy's eyes are aligned with the top third line. His body and the ball he is holding are in the right hand third because he is looking to the left of the screen. This space between him and the left edge of the frame is called lead space. Lead space gives the audience a pleasing sense of space. If the boy was over to the left of the frame, looking in the same direction, the audience would get a squashed sensation and feel uncomfortable. The space between the top of the frame and the top of his head is called head space. Too much and he would look too small. Too little and he would look sort of chopped off and again would make the audience uncomfortable. Don't get the idea that you are going to be able to exactly apply all of this every time you shoot some video. The best way to approach it is to keep all of these tips in mind and try as best you can to use them. There is a lot to learn about composition and shooting video in general, but the best way to start improving is by learning a few rules like these and then going out and practicing. If you would like to learn more about basic video shooting techniques, go to the DIYvideoeditor.com where you can find more detailed tutorials.